يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا O oh my servants, indeed I have made haram upon myself oppression and I have made it haram amongst you. So do not oppress one another. The greatest form of oppression or dhulm is the dhulm that occurs between the servant and his Lord. The dhulm that occurs between a servant and his Lord. And that is the dhulm of shirk. As Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Indeed, shirk is a great dhulm. So the greatest type of dhulm, the greatest type of oppression, wrongdoing, transgression, is the one that occurs between a person and his Lord by having that person commit shirk. When that individual commits shirk, then he has committed the oppression between himself and his Lord. Because the right of a person upon his Lord or the right of Allah upon the person is that the person obeys Allah and fulfills the commandments upon Tawheed. Just like in the hadith the Prophet ﷺ said, حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا The right of Allah upon His servants is that they worship Him and do not commit any shirk alongside with Him. So the greatest oppression a person can commit, the greatest dhulm a person can commit, is the act of shirk. Because that is then dhulm between yourself and your Lord. And the ruling on this type of dhulm, if a person dies committing shirk, then the ruling is, he will be in the hellfire forever. Because Allah mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with him. The second type of dhulm is the dhulm which occurs between yourself and other people. The dhulm that occurs between yourself and other people. What is that? That is all of the wrongdoing and the oppression you may cause to other people. Deceiving other people, lying about other people, backbiting other people, taking the rights of other people. That is all oppression that occurs amongst the people. So that is one type of dhulm. Oppression between you and other people. What is the ruling on that type? If a person dies having committed oppression to others, not having sought repentance for it or returned the rights, then on the day of judgment, it cannot be forgiven until the rights are returned. Cannot be forgiven until the rights are returned because you have taken the right of another person. Hence the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the famous hadith, أَتَدْرُونَ مَنِ الْمُفْلِسِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Do you know who the bankrupt one is on the day of judgment? قَالُوا مَنْ لَا دِرْهَمَ وَلَا دِنَارَ لَهُ They said the one who doesn't have any gold or silver, doesn't have any money, he is bankrupt. But then the Prophet ﷺ explained to them, لَيْسَ كَمَا تَذُنُّونَ It is not as you consider, not what you think. The bankrupt one on the day of judgment is the individual who used to do worship. He used to do worship, pray and fast and hajj. But at the same time, he used to take the rights of the people. Oppress this one, lie about that one, abuse that one, beat this one taking the rights of the people even though he used to worship. 
So on the day of judgment, all of those people who he oppressed, who he did wrong to, they will come wanting to get their rights back. So they will start taking his good deeds. All of the people that he oppressed, they will come one by one taking their good deeds. Until all of his good deeds, they run out, but there are still people waiting yet to get their rights back. So then, in that case, they will remove their own bad deeds and throw them upon him. So that is the one who is bankrupt on that day. Even though he had worship, he will lose his deeds and take other people's evil deeds because of the oppression he did to others. The third type of dhulm, the third type of dhulm, the third type of oppression is the dhulm that a servant does between himself and himself. The dhulm that a person does to himself. How can you wrong yourself? How can you oppress yourself? By committing sins. Committing sins is oppression to yourself. Why? Because then you are putting yourself in line for punishment. You are putting yourself in line for punishment by committing sins. So you're oppressing yourself. You're oppressing yourself because you are putting yourself in line for punishment due to the sins you're committing. And that is as the Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّ أُمَّةِ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى all of my ummah will enter paradise except for the ones who refuse. All of my ummah will enter paradise except for the ones who refuse. They said, O oh Messenger of Allah, who would refuse? Who would refuse to enter paradise? He said, Man ata'ani faqad dakhal al jannah. Aw dakhal al jannah. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى Whoever obeys me enters paradise. But whoever disobeys me, refuses, then he is the one who is refusing his place in paradise. He is the one who is refusing entry into paradise. The one who refuses to obey the commandments and to stick to the uh, rulings. And instead he falls into the haram then he is refusing entry into paradise. To accept entry into paradise, then you simply obey the rulings of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, what was taught. But if you do not, then it's like you are now refusing entry into paradise. So the third type of dhulm is the dhulm that a person does between himself and himself.